Rain lashed against the windows, wind howled through the city. He took a long drag, the ember glowing like a malevolent eye. His penthouse office, usually a sanctuary, felt like a sinking ship tonight. He was surrounded by half-finished cases, cold trails, and the ghostly echoes of unsolved crimes. Rourke was a man of shadows, at home in the city's underbelly. His face, a roadmap of hard living, held a perpetual weariness. He lived on a diet of cigarettes, cheap whiskey and justice, though the latter was in short supply these days. Another gust of wind rattled the windows. It was a night for bad news. He could feel it in his bones. Come in, he growled, his voice roughened by years of smoke and shouting. The door creaked open, revealing his elderly secretary, Mrs. Higgins. Her face, usually a mask of quiet efficiency, was pale and drawn. She clutched a dripping umbrella in one hand, a sealed envelope in the other. There's someone here to see you, detective, she said, her voice barely a whisper. He insisted it couldn't wait. Didn't you tell him I was closed for the night? I did, detective, but he wouldn't listen. He said it was a matter of life and death. He didn't give a name, said you'd understand. The envelope was heavy, made of thick, expensive paper. There was no address, no name, just a single embossed symbol, a stylized bird with outstretched wings. The Shrike. It was a symbol Rourke knew from his past, a ghost he thought he'd buried long ago. His hand trembled slightly as he took the envelope. He dismissed Mrs. Higgins with a curt nod, and she shuffled out, closing the door quietly behind her. He turned the envelope over in his hands, feeling a strange mix of apprehension and curiosity. Whatever this was, it was bad news, he could feel it in his gut. With a sigh he used his cigarette to melt the wax seal. Inside he found a single card, the same shrike symbol emblazoned on its front. He flipped it over. Scrawled on the back, in elegant handwriting, was an address. Below the address, a single, chilling sentence. Come alone if you value your life. Rourke stared at the card, his blood turning to ice. The Shrike? Here? After all these years? It was impossible. He thought he'd left that part of his life behind. Yet here it was, rearing its ugly head like a venomous snake. He had to know what this was about. He poured the rest of his whiskey down his throat, ignoring the burn as it went down. He needed to clear his head. He grabbed his coat, a battered trench coat that had seen better days, and headed out into the storm. The rain hammered down on him, the wind whipping his coat around him like a shroud. He hailed a cab, a battered yellow car that looked as though it had seen its fair share of storms, and tossed the address at the driver. The driver, a man with eyes as tired as the city itself, simply nodded and pulled away from the curb, disappearing into the rain-soaked night. The address took him to the industrial district, a desolate wasteland of abandoned factories and crumbling warehouses. The rain had turned the streets into rivers, reflecting the neon signs and streetlights like a kaleidoscope of broken dreams. He got out of the cab, the driver not even bothering to wait for payment, and made his way down a narrow alleyway, the stench of decay and despair heavy in the air. The air crackled with an unnatural energy as I approached the warehouse. I could feel it on my skin, raising goosebumps despite the humidity. I drew my gun, a 38 Special that felt woefully inadequate in the face of whatever awaited me, and pushed open the heavy metal door. The warehouse was dimly lit, the air thick with the smell of ozone and something else, something metallic and alien. Shadows danced in the flickering light, hiding more than they revealed. He moved cautiously, his gun held out in front of him, his senses on high alert. He could hear the echo of his own footsteps, the sound amplified in the cavernous space. Suddenly, a blinding light filled the warehouse, forcing me to shield my eyes. When I could see again, I found myself surrounded. Men in dark suits, their faces obscured by shadows, emerged from the darkness. They held strange, futuristic-looking weapons, their cold eyes fixed on me with a predatory hunger. He knew then, with a sinking certainty, that he'd walked into a trap. The Shrike symbol on the card hadn't been a summons, but a death warrant. He'd been played, manipulated like a pawn in a game he didn't understand. But who were these people? And what did they want with him? Days bled into nights, time lost all meaning, his body was no longer his own, it was a canvas of pain, a grotesque masterpiece of science and cruelty. He felt his humanity slipping away, replaced by something cold, something alien. He was no longer Jack Rourke, the world-weary detective, he was becoming something else, something monstrous. Then, as suddenly as it began, the pain stopped. I lay there, gasping for breath, 
my body bathed in sweat. I looked down at myself, and my heart lurched in horror. My skin was gone, replaced by a shimmering, metallic exoskeleton. My hands were gone, replaced by wickedly sharp talons. I could feel a strange energy thrumming through my veins, a power that both terrified and exhilarated me. I was the Shrike. Rage, raw and untamed, surged through him. He ripped free from the table, the metal restraints snapping like twigs. The technicians scattered, their screams music to his ears. He was a whirlwind of metal and fury, tearing through them with a terrifying ease. He was a weapon unleashed and the world would tremble before him. I burst out of the facility, soaring into the storm-wracked night. The city stretched out beneath me, a tapestry of light and shadow. I was no longer bound by the laws of man or nature. I was something more, something other. I was the Shrike, and this city was mine now.